more and more people are taking zinc supplements and I believe that this is a problem, especially in the long term. In fact, I've actually supplemented zinc for many months and it led to a bunch of problems that I've now finally understood and corrected. So first of all, all nutrients have to be in a ratio to each other. An excess of one just leads to a deficiency of others. So basically, more is not always better. The key is balance. Just look at all of the minerals that exist and you're taking one of them. Zinc and copper, another trace mineral, have a very unique relationship. They basically have to be in a direct ratio, but different from the antagonistic ratio of magnesium to calcium, for example, which have opposing functions, zinc and copper actually have overlapping functions. So if you have too much zinc, you can become uneasy for other people, stressed, get heart palpitations, histamine issues, problem sleeping, a weak immune system and get burned from the sun very fast. Moreover, it can lead to oxidative stress and therefore to most modern diseases and also a lack of energy. So I'm actually someone that is generally not against supplementation, but I'm also not into supplementing everything. Okay, I try to get all of my nutrients from food, but with modern soil quality, and seafood pollution, supplementation is necessary. That being said, zinc is one of the trace minerals that do not have to be supplemented. If you have a diet that includes high quality animal products like meat, and that is any diet that claims to be somewhat healthy. I'm not talking about the conventional meat of your supermarket, by the way, that they love to put in these studies to show that meat is bad for you. I'm talking about grass fed, grass finished, from local farms. Zinc is particularly high in red meat and especially in grass fed and finished of course and supplementing it does not make up for the lack of high quality animal products in any diet. It is just one of the many nutrients found in meat. So basically there's also all of the B vitamins and there's eight different vitamins that, all, that are all very very important. Cholesterol, saturated fat, choline, taurine, omega-3s, conjugated linoleic acid, which is an omega-6 fatty acid, which I'm usually against, but that is an omega-6 fatty acid that is only found in animal products and it has shown to have health benefits in studies. And the list goes on and on. Some of these nutrients are only found in animal products. That is why the absence of meat, for example, in any diet is bad for you but also the absence of some plant foods, like in the carnivore diet, is bad for you because of the lack of certain nutrients like copper, manganese and molybdenum. Balance is key. And before you do anything crazy on these extreme diets, whether it be vegan, carnivore, keto, correct your nutrient ratios. Believe me, that is hard enough, but that is how you're gonna feel good and healthy. Now back to the supplement. Most of the supplements that you can find online are not necessary and usually cause more harm than actual good. In the case of zinc, it is at least an essential mineral which can make sense to supplement it if you cannot afford high quality meat yet. But then we get to the second, second point and that is the dosage. Most of the supplements that you can find online have dosages that are crazy high and this is a problem. You see, being deficient in a mineral is very bad, but having too much of it is just as bad that usually ends up in oxidative stress and liver damage. I've actually made first-hand experience with that. The RDAs are usually not a good indicator of anything. Basically, it's what the back label says of how much you should be taking, because the need for trace mineral really depends on your absorption, so how healthy your digestive system is, and it also depends on how many cells you have, so basically how tall you are, etc. Still, they show better amounts than most of the dosages you can see in these supplements. Now, in the case of absorption, I remember before I fixed my digestion and my health, I could sometimes take extremely large dosages of these supplements, but now if I just take a little bit more than half of a tablet that I didn't take for like five days, and before I would take it like 
every day one tablet, now I get toxicity effects. So this is not some useless factor. If you're fixing your digestion, really be careful with how much you're supplementing. Now, before we go over to the copper to zinc ratio, you have to understand that taking one trace mineral for a longer period of time, no matter how old or smart the guy looks who told you that, it is not a good idea, especially if you're having no idea about nutrition and vitamin and mineral interactions. Still, zinc has a tremendous amount of benefits and as you could probably feel that after taking it, and it is a very important aspect of a healthy diet. And if you are experiencing any health benefits after taking it, you might still be deficient in it. But once these health benefits are stopping or are becoming less noticeable, you should lower the dosage or stop the supplementation completely, at least for some time. So now about copper. Copper is a trace mineral that I've just found out recently to be incredibly important usually very overlooked people just mention it in the context of like zinc to copper ratio copper first of all needs to be bound to an organic compound if you have copper in your water then this is not good and you're also not going to benefit from eating copper so the metal copper is a mineral that is usually deficient in people with anemia because while iron and b12 are necessary for the formation of red blood cells and therefore oxygen transport, copper is needed for the transport of iron, so that this first of all happens, and the activation of oxygen in the cells. So if you have enough iron and B12, you can carry the oxygen to the cells, but it never gets activated because there is a lack of copper. So that's why if you're deficient in copper and you take it, you will feel a boost in your energy. Because finally, all of this oxygen is getting activated. So basically, you also need to balance out copper and iron. But if you think about it, if you're just consuming meat, yeah, you're getting iron and zinc in a kind of good ratio. And then you just need to balance these both with copper. So basically, just go for meat instead. The zinc to copper ratio should be 12 to 8 times the zinc to copper. Can you check this ratio? No, not really, because all of this is or most of this is happening inside the cell and they are very hard and expensive to measure. One thing you can do is supplementing them together in that ratio, but that will of course not fix a messed up ratio. Now, in general, zinc deficiency is far more common in most people because of the lack of animal products. But in carnivores or people taking zinc supplements for a long time, copper is usually very deficient. So you should have around 6 to 12 milligrams of zinc every day. But of course less if you're having meat, especially high quality meat, because you're getting zinc from these sources. The average person needs more zinc and also copper. A good indication of them being deficient is if you have a weak immune system and if you get burned from the sun very fast, as well as slow wound healing. The main takeaway from this video is to try to get your nutrients from food and especially zinc from meat and observe yourself after taking any supplement. If you're taking a supplement and you don't feel anything, it doesn't do anything, or you actually feel worse, then you should not be taking it. You're supposed to feel good, not spend more money on more supplements or <laughs> believing that you are healthy when you're following someone else's advice or the RDAs. If you are healthy, then you're going to feel healthy. It's as simple as that. Anyways, for more information about a healthy diet and other videos about nutrient ratios, check out my other videos or write me an email for private consultations and have a good day.